So I will open the public hearing for the Deerfield Elementary School fiscal year 2022 budget. Uh, today is April 14th, 2021. It is 6 o'clock p.m. This meeting is a virtual meeting and is being recorded. So um, the, the hearing is being held under the bylaws of the town of Deerfield uh, to discuss the budget for the coming school year. <clears throat> so with that, I will turn the meeting over to Mr. Modesto and Ms. Pareda. If she's I'm here. I get I get to introduce Ms. Pareda. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So uh, you're the last public hearing, and we've done this a few times already. Um, but Darius is gonna share his screen as we usually do, which just shows the narrative that I sent out to you all today. Um, so while he's getting that queued up. Um, I'll start with the spiel that probably we've heard many times already in this group and in others uh, about how we built the 22 budget. So we start by looking at um, existing programs, services, and staffing from the prior year. So anything from FY21 was replicated into this budget as we started building it. And then we look at contractual obligations for teachers and instructional assistants, which moving into next year, there was a 2% COLA. And then we look at any step or column changes. Um, and for our budget increase for Deerfield Elementary, that works out to be about a 2% overall increase to the general fund budget. Uh, then we take into consideration any wage increases for non-union staff, so custodian support staff, administrators, et cetera, including central office. And we review non-salary expenses and adjust up or down based on the prior three year spending history. Um, one thing that we did do this year was also add in a cost of a living adjustment for uh, operating expenses, such as utilities and insurances. And then enrollment and class size projections are discussed with the principal to make sure that we have adequate staffing for the upcoming year based on current um, enrollment numbers. And then we look at our <clears throat> school choice, uh, early childhood, school lunch, any other revolving fund that we might have, special education revolving, et cetera, as well as grants to make sure that the expenses that have been paid from those accounts in prior years uh, can be paid in the upcoming year. Um, so in looking at all of those pieces, uh, we did discover that Deerfield was facing some financial hardship. Uh, the first budget draft came in at 7.12%. Uh, most of our challenges are related to our revolving funds and COVID-19 hardship as our revenues are down in our school lunch and our early childhood program. We were going to be short in expenditures, roughly $125,000 to cover salaries and wages that had been paid from those accounts in prior years. We also were going to see an increase in our special education expenses. Um, <clears throat> that expense was twofold. One, we have uh, some additional out of district placement, and then we also are losing some revenue that would be coming into our special education revolving account. So between those two pieces, on top of the things that I discussed in the first paragraph, our initial draft budget was at about 7.12% increase. Um, so obviously we knew that that was not a feasible number and wanted to keep the general fund budget down as much as we could. Um, so we did look at alternative funding sources for the majority of those expenses. Uh, we are utilizing some grants. We are utilizing some school choice money. We're also utilizing some savings from this year, uh, primarily from positions that were not refilled, people that took leave of absence, for example. Um, and we're going to use those savings to help support next year, although there is an increase to the general fund as well, as you'll see. Um, we are looking at a 3.35% increase or just over $162,000 over the prior year. Um, so like I said, the, the, in the first paragraph there, all those explanations, the biggest increase to the budget is the cost of living and wage increases for all staff, instructional assistants, teachers, and then anyone who's not in the union. So that way, works out to be about two and a half, two and three quarter percent. And so we are having a little bit of a higher increase than we probably would in a normal year, especially considering that we have no new initiatives. We're not adding new staffing. Um, but we're really trying to make adjustments from changes that were made in FY21 to level fund the budget 
and then also make up for those revenue losses and the hardship that we're seeing in our revolving funds. Um, so the total budget that we're looking to approve tonight is just shy of $5 million, $4,995,986. Million uh, so that will be the number we're asking for a vote for once we close out of the public hearing. Um, and I did give you a little chart on the bottom here that just shows historically where the budget has been. Just I think that historical perspective is good for us as a reminder and for public if anyone is watching. Uh, so you can see we've typically been under 3% in the prior three years, especially last year, we level funded, so there was no increase. FY20 was 2.4 and FY19 was 2.88. So we are a little bit higher than I think um, we have been in the past, but you know, this is the budget we have at this time and we're moving forward with asking for a vote tonight. So happy to take questions if anyone has them. Trevor. So um, what was the COLA amount we were using for kind of utilities and, and that kind of thing? As you mentioned, looking at cost of electricity, get, you know, gas, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think I have a 3.5% increase built in for um, operating expenses such as utilities or insurance. Okay. <clears throat> and if we um because we we have sh shifted a lot of the expense for the lunch program and early childhood should we see things turn around by next year and we are back seeing more kids coming in and you know back to a more of a normal lunch um by the time we got to you know towards the middle or end of next year we we may see a a surplus right that we could then move back to kind of get back to where we hope to be in the future yeah with both of those revolving accounts so the early childhood program and school lunch we are expecting that enrollment in early childhood will return to a normal full day schedule and so we will have tuitions coming in from that um, and school lunch i haven't heard anything about usda extending the free lunches at this point so you know you're absolutely right assuming we're bringing in revenue um, we'll have to have other conversations. Do we let that account, those two accounts build back up so that FY23, we can make sure that we support those wages um, yep. and expenses that we would normally pay from there that we're not this year? Or um, do we want to relieve some of either the grant funding or the general fund budget with those funds to do some other things? So yep. you're absolutely right, Trevor. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And... <clears throat> Do we have any update on enrollment expectations for next year, or are we still sort of in never, never land? <laughs> I guess is the question I would ask. I think Tina has a pretty good estimate of class sizes right now. Um, I don't have those numbers in front of me. I'm not sure if she does, if you want more specifics, but right. uh, I know that we had had a recent conversation about um, the kindergarten class sizes and things like that. So I think she's got a good idea on the numbers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, currently we, st we still have one class that's just two classrooms, correct? Or would be in normal circumstances, two classrooms. Is that correct? The fifth grade, two of them? We're gonna be moving forward with two grade levels that have two classrooms because our kindergarten this year has two class uh, sections okay. and now our sixth grade our in our next year's sixth grade class will have two right. so our first yeah. and our sixth grade yeah, i was looking at i think it's 41 in fifth grade this year and i assume that was the last you know that was the original our kindergarten class this year um was small because it was small or was it small because it was a borderline case that was exacerbated by the COVID crisis with people holding their children out. It's tricky to make that prediction because what happened is COVID closed us in March when enrollment happens. I know. So yeah, so I don't know if um, we have, we're up to 39 enrolled this year. So my guess would be that people held back on enrollment last year because of COVID. So you're up to 39 enrolled for Kindergarten for next year or first grade yeah. for next year? Kindergarten for next year. And do you have any indication of what enrollment will be in the first grade class for next year? Similar to what is in our kindergarten this year. 
and possibly adding on some school choice. Okay. Oh, are you asking me if we've gotten in anybody moving into the district? I, I don't yet. I'm, I'm just wondering if any families are going to come out of the woodwork and bring their children back to the elementary school next year. That's the question I have. We have no way of knowing, but right now you're planning on two teachers for the students that are in the kindergarten class this year, plus some school choice. Yes. Okay. Well, it will be interesting. <laughs> It's been an interesting year. Uh, yes, it has. But that gives us a, a two classroom class again to start wondering about. <clears throat> so, what's interesting, are you funny you bring up, Ken, is that is a problem um, statewide is the, the balloon classes in kindergarten are being, you're going to hear newspaper articles about that, that other other such, other communities, you know, you know, mostly larger ones in Eastern Mass. Many people held their children out of kindergarten last year because um, they didn't want it became kind of this the thing to do. So they're, there's this huge balloon class across the state in kindergarten. So right. I'm kind of curious if there's going to be, you know, we had a you know pretty good remote kind of thing going, but I'm curious if we're going to see that number jump. Um, it will be something we we'll have to keep an eye on. Right. I think you know, in, in both instances, we have to. I mean, that's a, a staff position. I assume we've. Uh, we're not, I don't know, we're we're not filling it or we uh, have someone retiring and we're not filling that position or, or are we short one position, I, you know, down one position going into next year? No. So for next year, the way that it works out with um, the shifting of students, Tina's just sort of going to have to shuffle staff around. So we have the exact right number of teachers right now okay. for the number of classes that we're going to have. So if we actually grow in enrollment, we could be having a, a conversation about needing to add a teacher that we don't necessarily have budgeted. And and do we have the physical space? Okay. Assume let's let's I'm going to. I'm going to play worst case scenario. Do we have enough space available? Should we still be under mandate to physically distance students for next year? To go back in full, you know. Oh, Ken, we have been really creative with space and we still have a whole gym that we can make a, a classroom space. So I guess my answer to that would be yes. But okay. we're we're not planning for that next year. I, yeah, I hope I and I hope you don't. <laughs> I I hope we don't have to. But I I'm just asking all the little niggling questions that have been coming up on my radar as as we've gone through this budget process. I I mean you've done a phenomenal job, and we have what we have. <clears throat> so, but and you know. We'll, we'll find out. And I know you're going to be putting forward your school choice recommendations and, or, you know, putting school choice slots out there to fill out classes as we can to maybe generate a little more revenue. So that that should, may help us. We'll find out. So. Carrie. Yeah, I, I am curious about the librarian for next year. And I think we've talked about this before. And I don't remember what the upshot was. I know this year was a position that wasn't filled because there was no one in the library way. But I see that there's no salary in it for next year. So have you made the decision to to not be hiring for that position next year? Or what? So next year, we're combining our computer and our library um, positions to a library media specialist position. And that will be a 1.0 position. And we're increasing our art teacher to 1.0 as well. OK, great. Thank you. Very good. Any other questions out there? I think the other thing you're going to see in the news a lot, just so that you're kind of informed on it, is that the SR3 money is starting to they're starting to formulate what that can look like. We're starting to see preliminary numbers of what that is. Um, the way we're approaching that is we're not looking at SR3 toward this budget. And correct me, Shelly, if I'm wrong in any way of this, but we're not looking at SR3 at all. This is, you know, the, we can use it for the next two fiscal years. Right. Um, September of 24, I believe we can use it until... So we're going to be holding back on that since we have a, you know, it's kind of a, a security blanket moving forward as we see how things shake out. Also a security blanket for if the economy, you know, there's concerns about, a, you know, a recession following this 
actually things kind of get up and running. So um, that's how we're approaching that money going into this budget. You're going to just reading articles where the schools aren't fortunate enough to be in a position we are in, um, where they're going to have to use SR3 immediately, um, either to find staff, to do staffing or to do other things. Um, that's not our plan in this district. If in Deerfield, we might have to do things differently in other communities, but I think across the board, we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to, we came through this pre in pretty good shape. Um, mm -hmm. We were preparing last year for doom and gloom, and it just didn't hit us that way um, economically, and the, the funding has, has come in. So I just, want to, I just want to mention that because people are, you're likely to get questions from other people about what, what this SR3 money and what are you guys doing with it? Mm -hmm. We're we're holding it for now, <laughs> and that's smart. Very smart. If if at all possible, that's what I would do. So, <clears throat> um, one one last question: um, the school lunch program this year has largely been, at least the the um, food part of it, not the salaries, it has been largely funded through uh, COVID relief funds. Is that not correct? And do we see anything remotely possibly happening next year that they mandate continued, you know, essentially free lunches for students or are, are we anticipating going back to charging? I know um, that you've budgeted assuming that we're going to be able to start charging again, but. Yeah. So this year uh, we actually are supporting the school lunch program with the general fund budget, not with COVID funds okay. um, because we had savings from other salary positions. We were able to move those staff that would have paid from school lunch onto general fund. Next year we are going to support with um, the grant and we are assuming we're going to be able to start charging again. Um, okay. <clears throat> the, state has already been pushing for some changes in the program for example um, deerfield wasn't doing pickups anyway but none of our schools are doing pickups as after april break so the state's really trying to start making that shift for districts um, slow process but i do expect we'll start charging next year and be able to build that fund back up to a point where it can better support itself again okay okay yeah i think if if the state moves forward again to do another year it's going to be from my political standpoint it's going to be something that they're going to be looking to do forever you know what i mean if they continue right. that kind of stuff and then maybe that is something that's an option that's on the table that free meals for everybody under 18 forever um however we would have to restructure how we set up everything including right. you know because of the loss of revenue and stuff you know some of the quality and options have gone down for students as well that we yeah. haven't been able to do as well and so it would take a i think a you got to look at a full overhaul there. So mm -hmm. a lot more right. than just money is riding on that. Right. So, okay. <clears throat> I'm not seeing any other hands up. <laughs> I feel pretty comfortable, you know, with the budget and all the work. I I'm very grateful for Shelly and, and Darius and Tina, um, you know, your whole staff. You've always been very um, attentive to, you know, the pressure puts on the town uh, well you know the important task of educating people educating our children and um this is uh this is a budget i could support knowing that we have some support in the background if something happens we have esser to look at you know we you know if you have to add for another kindergarten um room it, it looks like we have a, a good budget but with a little bit of flexibility with some support behind us if something goes wrong over the next year and and really if if things go really well start moving back in a better direction so yeah good. i feel pretty good about it very good okay well if we don't have any other questions i'm inclined to close the public hearing at 6 20 p.m and uh move to a general session um, I will go back to the minutes. Uh, I mean, we will go on to review and approve the minutes of March 10th, 2021. Motion to approve the minutes of March 20, March 10, 21. Second. Who is the second, Trevor? Uh, David. 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 David second. I thought I should speak up at some point, so you know I'm here. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, after Darius the rabbit, we got uh, we got a second from you. So, did anyone have any comments or questions on the minutes? Um, not hearing any, I will move to a vote. Um, Ken Cudabek, yes. David Sharp, yes. Carrie Etchells, yes. And Mary Raymond, yes. <laughs> and Trevor McDaniel, yes. There. Okay. Yes. Mary, Mary's in silence. I just figured you were silencing because Sorry. you're sitting at another meeting. <laughs> okay. There is no, oh, I'm sorry, financial statement and sign warrants. Um, do you want to say anything about uh, financials, Shelly? No, was that on this agenda? I must have missed that. I'm sorry. It's on it, and I believe is something was sent. Uh, I know I sent it prior to the joint meeting. I right, yes, you prior to the joint meeting, you did send yeah. something, and we've signed warrants, so yes. I can I can backtrack and uh, piece all of that together. So um, yeah, if you need the number for the record again, let me know. I'll pull it out and send it to you. I, I'm pretty sure I can track it down. So. <clears throat> So no comments beyond what you sent us. We're still in good shape. We're still on track for what's been presented in past meetings. So this is yep. good. Uh, public comment. We have no public comment this evening. So we are down to unfinished business. The FY22 budget. Vote on the final budget. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve. I can just get there. <laughs> the final fiscal 22 budget of $4,995,986. I'll make a motion to move that. Chair McDaniel. Second. Gary, second. Any other discussion or considerations to be made? And not seeing any, we will move to a vote. Uh, a roll call vote. Ken Cutterback, aye. David Sharp? Yes. Carrie yes. Etchells? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Trevor McDaniel? Yes. Very good. We have a 5 nothing vote approving the budget, which can be forwarded on to the select board. Um, and uh, thank you again, Shelly, you and your team, and Tina, and Elaine, and anyone else that uh, helped put this together. Um, it's really it's been a very tough year for budgets and for just general administration. So I, I'm just going to continue my refrain of thank you all. We appreciate everything you're doing so much. Um, yes. And thank you to the committee for supporting it. <clears throat> Do we have any other questions? If not, we can move to adjournment. Unless Darius has anything to say. I just want to mention we had a we had someone abandoning us um, when we had to put it. So I just want to. You're still around. I just want to thank Trevor. Um, you know, uh, as all of you probably yes. may jump in as well. But the uh, just it's it's great, Trevor. You've been great working with to work with, and I really appreciated you creating a a bridge between the school committee and the select board i think it was important to have that created and i think you developed a new trust between the school committee and the town government um which was i think you were a vital component in doing that so um you. you leave you leave with that that um that uh, flag to bear um so thank right. you so so much for doing that thank you it's been such a pleasure working with all of you i i I've just so much enjoyed being a part of this community and um, and helping the children and the staff and administration, um, you know, do, do the most important job we do is, is, you know, provide a way to educate our, our future. So our children. So I've, I've just really loved it. And then I will still be around if people need help just uh, just across the brook. So <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you will. Yes. And and I will echo and, and say thank you, Trevor. It's been it's been great serving with you. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> Appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Same here. Thank you, David. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor.
Thank you. <laughs> Do we have when's the town election? Do we have a replacement yet? Uh, May third. There's an uh, as an election. Uh, Erica uh, Boyd. Jacob. Jacob, thank you very much. Uh, is is uh, running? I, I believe she's the only one on the ticket, um, so I think she she's a fairly safe unless there's a sticker campaign. But <laughs> I think she'll be okay. She I think she's going to be a wonderful addition to this board. I, I met her, spoke with her, and um, I'm excited to support her for for this position for sure. Okay, well, that's great. Um, and just to, just to point it back, Mary's running again for re-election. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Was, uh, there are two candidates for school committee this year, and uh, Mary's running again. And um, you, Mary. Eric, as you have mentioned, um, and you can apply to get an early voting ballot if you want to do that. You just go to the town hall. They're right in the right above the drop box. You can pick one up, fill it out, drop it in the drop box, all in this one fell swoop, and have the ballot mail, mailed to your house if you don't want to vote in person. So yeah, thank um, you for mentioning that. Yes. So um, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> and Trevor with his final second on the thank Deerfield you. School Committee. Uh, Ken Cutterback, yes. David Sharp, yes. Carrie Etchells. Yes. Mary Raymond. Yes. And the best for last, Trevor McDaniel, his final yes. vote. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Thank you all very much.